So CITCT was guided by the policy that the ICT sector should be guided by the market, not by government interference. Maybe by government support, but not interference. For example, if the market calls for call centers, then we shouldn't force the investors to specialize in programming. So instead of regulating, we gave incentives to developers of IT parks like this one. We assisted investors in identifying promising provincial sites, ergo the cyber corridor. And part of what I'm doing now is to let the people know, the investment community know that there's Davao part of the cyber corridor. And we built more transport facilities to those sites. Your Davao International Airport is crucial, was crucial in the choice of Davao as part of the cyber corridor. So this philosophy of encouraging rather than, um, rather than uh, regulating drove the fast growth of call centers. But now the market is also leading to the growth of higher value added segments of the offshoring and outsourcing industries like accounting, legal services, legal services like a lawyer, a law firm in America will send to a, to somebody here, uh, assignments for legal research, for example. And uh, so that is certainly higher value added because you're a researcher but you're not doing it for somebody in, in Davao City. You're doing it for somebody in Dallas, Texas, or something like that. The same thing with medical uh, and personal and administrative services. And uh, of course, engineering design. We are such creative people. We don't have to travel abroad and get a job working in an architecture office in another country because we can do that right here for somebody else in another country. And IT services, software development, that is a growing area for the Philippines. Just the other day, we inaugurated the IT center of one of the top 21 in the world, UST Global. And the chairman of the board said in his speech that he had met me in 2007 in one of my trips to the United States. So uh, it was actually, it was in fact uh, part of my trip, was, and it's always an investment promotion meeting and he was one of them. And what he really liked about the Philippines, among many other things I mentioned earlier, one very important factor was we have a good intellectual property protection regime. So that's a policy environment that promotes investments. Third, the development of human capital. To increase the country's share of in the global market for offshoring and outsourcing services, the government intensified the implementation of various programs that will train its workforce to enable them to find jobs in the BPO sector and to educate the young on the use of computers and internet for the next generation of IT BPO workers. So more than 4,000 public schools are now connected to the internet, including 57 schools in Davao City. In technical education and skills training, we have invested three times as much as the combined budgets of three previous administrations. A very large portion of this investment goes to scholarships for the BPO industry, including more than 4,000 in Region 9. The other day, Secretary Bobo Sihuko of TESDA forwarded to me a text message from one of those 4,000 saying, thanks, Secretary Sihuko, because I was one of the scholars and now I'm in concentrics. There you are, that's uh, Sarah Dinyal. <laughs> That's why we decided to have this uh, event here in Concentric so we could see where Sarah is now training. So thanks to these strategic investments, billions in private investments poured into the country, creating half a million new jobs in BPO alone. Today the Philippines with 90 million people has challenged India's one billion population for BPO supremacy. Compared to almost
cost nothing in 2001. 0.02 billion dollars. Our BPO industry now earns more than seven billion dollars. Not far behind India's nine billion dollars for call centers. And the 500,000 jobs that we're creating in ICT are, to me, part of the legacy that I will leave. And this is a legacy, I like to think, of hard work, a strong and stable economy, renewed global investment, a, a renewed global engagement, major investments in healthcare and education, and dramatic improvements in human and physical infrastructure. Much work remains to be done, but I'm determined to turn over to a new government, a new Philippines ready for the challenge of bringing the nation to the verge of first world in 20 years. And how do we do that? You know, 200 years ago, there was the, or more than that, the agricultural revolution. Then there was the industrial revolution. Now we have the knowledge revolution. And that's the way to bring us to the first world. And I am glad that Davao is part of that corridor that will lead us to the first world. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Madam President.